So, as I talk about prayer, this is what I want to start with. Prayer is not peculiar to Christianity. Almost everybody I know prays. This is what Shekau, the head of Boko Haram, would do. He would say some kind of prayer. This is what huge people, as much as the richest man in the world, Amons will say some kind of prayer. Donald Trump will say some kind of prayer. But so the concept of prayer is not new because everybody actually believes there's a higher power somewhere that can step into things and change things. But what is very different is this. When it comes to prayer, most people don't, um, how will I explain it now? When it comes to prayer, most people don't see the results of their prayers. And this is very frustrating. In fact, some people have said because of this, God does not answer prayers. Because of this, there is no God. I know people that have changed and says, I don't go to church again because I really prayed and God did not answer and it was very mean to me. And people say all sorts of things. But the question today is this, what does the Bible teach about prayer? So let's turn our Bibles to James, maybe chapter 4. Let's start with that. That's a good place to start from. James chapter 4. I want to show you something that if your prayer is not being answered, uh, so in today's teaching, I'm going to show you five key reasons why people pray and there is no result from their prayer. So it's possible to pray and not see results. So if you are praying and you are not seeing results, you want to begin to ask yourself a very important question. Why am I not seeing results? The general conclusion people have when they pray and not see results is that God is not kind to me, God doesn't like me, and they stop praying. If you're learning how to drive and you're not getting it out right, the people that eventually learn how to drive are those that even when they make mistakes or have accidents, they keep what? They keep learning to drive. If because you've had incidents in the place of prayer and you didn't see some manifestations, you stop praying, you will never learn how to be effective in prayer. So there are people that have stopped praying actively. Actively, they've stopped praying. So they will pray in a religious way without expectations. They will fast in religious with expectations. Some don't even go to church at all again. But behind all those things is that there's no vital, current, active trust that God will make certain things happen. All those things do not exist. All right. Um, yes. So James chapter 4 in verse 2. James chapter 4 in verse 2. So, so Pastor Lion and um, Pastor George, you hear me look at um, um, outside and the parking because of all the incidences. Yeah, thank you. Yes, James chapter 4 in verse 2. The Bible says that you lost. When the Bible says lost, lost is used a lot in the negative terms, but the real word lost is just desire. So what it says is you desire and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you have not. And the scripture says, the first thing is that because you ask not. He says, you are doing all those things you are doing, trying to get married, trying to have a job, and it says you ask not. Then the next verse says, ye ask, so these people are asking, it says you ask and do what? Receive not, because what? You ask a means. Now, let me tell you what the Bible did not say. Most people read this. You know, there's a way you can read your mind into the Bible. Do you know what I'm talking about? If you attend our church, you will know that sometimes I really correct things. For example, in the book of Ephesians, where the Bible says that, um, that there's a spirit that works, the Bible says, well, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. Religious people have taken it to mean there's a demonic power that stays in the air. But that's not what the scripture means. The scripture says in the book of Ephesians 2, it says the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. So it tells us the location of that spirit. Where is it? 
in the children of disobedience. But most people say it's in the air. So question, why did the apostle call it the prince of the power of the air? The air is metaphoric for what is invisible, what you cannot touch. So because you cannot touch demons, you cannot hold spirits. He says there's a spiritual force that, he says there's a spiritual force. So the air is metaphoric. But it tells us where the demon is. It says the demon is in the children of disobedience. I'm saying so because many people live that in the children of disobedience and begin to focus on a demon that is in the air. Meanwhile, there's no demon in the air. All right. So why am I saying this? Back to this verse. So when people do not see their prayer answered, you will hear something like, God did not answer my prayer. God did not do it for me. See what the Bible says. Verse 3. You ask, what's the next verse, please? Next line. You ask and what? Did you notice it didn't say God does not respond? He says, you are the one that does not receive. He said, you are the one. Meaning that God is always giving. So there's nothing like I prayed and God did not do it. God, if you prayed, except you're doing something called prayer. He says, every time you pray, even the one that did not receive, God gives to him. So the question is this. If I'm praying and God is releasing, why am I not receiving? Because what most people really believe is that God is not responding to my prayers. God is not doing that about my prayers. And that's what it is. He says, you ask and you do not receive. Matthew 7, 7 and 7 and 8 says, ask and ye shall receive. There is a response. Listen to me. The same way you are responsible for asking in prayers, you are also responsible for receiving in prayers. That's what a lot of people have not been taught. They've been taught how to ask in prayers. They've not been taught how to receive in prayers. So when something happens that is not what they prayed for, they are quick to say God did not do it. But meanwhile, they are the ones that do not know how to receive. The question tonight is this. Do you know in a very practical way how to receive in prayer? He says, you ask and receive not. He didn't say God did not give. He didn't say God did not answer. He said you ask and receive not. Because when people, it, it's, and you know the thing, this thing changes the perspective of prayer. So if I pray and I don't see the results, if I know I'm not the one receiving, what do I do? I begin to work on myself on receiving. But when I think that God is my problem, what do I do? I become paralyzed and angry because in my mind, God is my problem. And that's why a lot of Christians are paralyzed and angry today because in their mind, God is not answering my prayers. But in the case, God has released but did not receive. But let's look at it. It says, you ask and receive not because you ask what? And miss. You ask, of course. He says, why do you ask and miss? He says, that you may consume it upon your loss. So, I'm going to come back to this verse. The first thing I wanted to establish was this. It's possible to pray and not see results. Most of the time when people pray and don't see results, most of the time it doesn't really have to do with God. It's about the fact that they've not been trained in a way to receive. So, there's a lot of teaching on asking. There are few teachings on receiving in prayer. So, today we're going to delve into it. I hope I can take some, series to, some part today. And it will continue on social media. So, how do we receive? Luke chapter 11, verse 1. I want to show you some fundamentals of prayer. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. So, listen to me. When it comes to prayer, praying is not just what is valuable. How you pray is also valuable. It says in James, they prayed, but because they prayed the wrong way, their prayer could not produce results. Someone says, I can just pray anyhow. If you are not the one that will answer your prayer, you cannot pray anyhow. Anybody that sees results in prayer does not pray anyhow. Let me tell you something. Look for the people that you know that see results in prayer. Go and ask them. There's nobody that prays anyhow. All of them understand the principles, the pattern, and the procedure that generates answered prayers. But there's that notion that says, let me just call on God. Listen to me. It's like an ATM card. The ATM card will work when you know the pain. If you don't know the pin, if you like sweat at the ATM, tell the ATM you know it, it's not work. Because you don't know the pin. 
there are pains when it comes to prayer. Once you press it, pom, 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 pom. You may not even be the owner of the card. The ATM will vomit result for you. So let's look at Luke chapter 11. Verse 1. And it came to pass as he was praying, Jesus was praying, when he had ceased praying, one of the disciples said unto him, Teach us to pray as John also thought a disciples to pray. He said, Teach us to pray. Two things. He said, Teach us to pray. One is this. Teach us to pray means teach us how to place priority on prayer. The second thing is that teach us to pray. Now literally pray. But if you read the Bible, you will understand that the apostles were praying. Why were they not asking Jesus to teach them to pray? The first thing I want to show you here. Prayer is a teachable skill. So if you say I'm not prayerful, it's because you don't want to learn it. The apostles were not prayerful, sir. They were not prayerful. Maybe your husband tells you, honey, you know I'm not a prayerful person. You say, honey, you can be a prayerful person if you want to learn it. Maybe you're watching me right now, you say, I'm not a prayerful person. If you want to be a prayerful person, you can be. You know why? If it's not teachable, the apostles will not say, teach us to pray. So, you may not have it as a foundation, but you can learn it. You can learn it. You can learn it. I remember when I learned how to pray. I learned how to pray between 1991 and 1993. That's when I learned how to pray. By 1995, I was able to pray three hours at a stretch. But I learned by 1992, once the prayer is more than 15 minutes, I'm done. But I learned how to pray. The people that taught me how to pray, I know them personally. So prayer is teachable. You can teach someone to pray. So if you don't know how to pray, good news to you. You know why? You can learn how to pray. So one of the things they said is this. He said, teach us to pray. What? As John also said to pray. So number one, prayer is teachable. But number two, the disciples or the apostles were actually praying. Please, once again, if you're joining and you belong to Harvesters and you belong to a church group, this is a good time to remind them to join um, the teaching this weekend, um, this today. Not the general group, just, you know, the church group. Um, and the disciples say something. They say, teach us to pray. There is an insight I want to see. Because the disciples were praying, maybe they were not praying deeply like Jesus Christ. But why did they say just to pray? Because they noticed that the prayers of Jesus produced results. But their own prayers was not producing results. So they will pray about getting a job. Jesus Christ will see results. They will say the prayer, they will not see the results. So they came to Jesus Christ and said, excuse me sir. <laughs> there is something effective about how you pray. Can you please teach us to pray? Meaning that not only pray, can prayer be taught, effectiveness in prayer. How prayer, praying the prayer that works can also be taught. So what we're looking at today is five reasons why people pray and do not see results. And I'm going to show you something from the verse first. Verse 2. And they said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father. And some people said this means that we should be saying our Father, Lord's Prayer. Listen to me. This is not what it means. This is what it says as a model. It says, use this as a pattern in prayer. What does a pattern mean? When you pray, there is a procedure. What's the first procedure? Every time you pray, come to him as what? Your father. That's the first thing. It says, every time you pray. Let me see. Everybody look at me. All of you on the screen, I want to connect to this. Do you realize that until Jesus Christ came, nobody ever called Jehovah God our Father. Nobody did. Think about it. Not Moses, not Elijah. Nobody ever called God our Father. What did they call him? God. And God is not a name. It's a description. Because the word God is for the womb. Elohim. It's the Most High. They're just describing him. The Most High. And listen to me. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to shake you. Sometimes when we are praying and singing, we say things like, what are the powerful names of God? Oh, Yigi Yigi, Agbuduba, the Asian Guru. You know, we look for all this traditional, the, the, Imbu, you know, you look for all these big names that say what God is. Yes or no? And Allah Badai, no, Allah Wotel. You know, we, we call him all this. Did even the names are big. The, the sound, there's, there's huge sound in the name. But let me say something to you. 
Someone say, what's the perfect name of God? Nobody knows the Father like Jesus Christ. If Jesus calls him Father, that's the best name. There's no, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It, it's like your wife tells you that my husband likes this. And you say, no, you don't, even know, you don't even know her husband. If nobody knows God like Jesus, and Jesus came on earth, and all the time, let me tell you something. Do you know the only time Jesus Christ called the Father God? Who knows? Who, who knows? There was probably one time. Jesus Christ called the Father God. He was on the cross of Calvary. When he had become our sin, what did he say? My God, my God, Eli, Eli, la sabbatani, Eli, Eli, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know why? Because when he became sin, God ceased to be his father. He had taken our place. So when he was calling me father, he was actually teaching us something. One reason why prayer is not answered. First reason, people don't have the right perspective of God. Many people pray as if God is their problem. Oh my God. Are you, many people pray as if what? God is their problem. Many people pray as if God is against them. In fact, some people actually think that it's God that is doing them. And they're using fasting and prayer to beg God to release them. Listen to me. If you think that God is your problem, you can never have answers to your prayers. The reason why is that, how can the one that is against you be the one that is helping you? That's why when Jesus is going to tell us about prayer, he says, the more you see God as your father, the more guaranteed that your prayer will be answered. So I'll give an example. Someone says, you even hear a program. You even hear something that says, um, you hear something that says that um, I will not let you go except you bless me. Meaning that God is the one that is holding the blessing and you're the one that is pushing for it. But that's not what the Bible says. You must always think that God is the one trying to bless me and the one running away. The more you begin to think that way, the more you see more answers to your prayers. Because, and that's why most times when I pray, I always say this. And I say this because I'm teaching the practice of prayer. I miss something. So prayer is taught by two ways. It's taught by teaching and it's taught by practice. So it's taught by teaching and taught by practice. When we pray, if you pray with us in next level prayer, you'll notice. One of the things I always say to you is that, can you thank God and say that God, you are kind towards me. God, you are merciful towards me. Let me say something to you. Have a look up here. Most people cannot confidently say that God is kind towards them, that God is merciful towards them. If you are praying to a God that you think is mean towards you, you don't have the faith to receive from him. And the reason why they think that way is this, they use their experiences to interpret who God is to them. So I prayed I didn't get a job. God doesn't like me. I didn't get it. So, so that's what they do. They use the experience to interpret. Question. When you were younger, you used your experience to determine if your mother loved you or not. Yes or no? Yes or no? When you grew up, was that stupid? Very stupid. How many of you felt that your parents adopted you, that they were not your real parents? Oh, you felt that way? Why did you feel that way? Because something happened when you were young and you thought that, you know, all the big... And you thought that if they really love me, because you use the experience to interpret what their love is to you. As you grew up, you understood most of you are using your experience to interpret God's love. Listen to me. If God's love is connected to your experience, you're fit to sink. That's why Paul always say, we know God loves us. We don't feel it. We know God loves us. You want to say answers to your prayers? You need to be convinced that God is on my side. Say God is kind to me. Say God is gracious to me. Did you, did you see how you felt, how you said it? It comes in an assurance. It's difficult to pray if you don't think God is kind to you, if you don't think God is, you know, it's, it's favorable to you. That's why every time you hear me pray, I say, Father, in the name of Jesus. And people think it's what we all say. No! It's really Daddy. 
Daddy. That's what I'm saying. Because in my mind, I see him as daddy. In my mind, I become like the kid in the candy store. And my father has a, you know, this wallet that has all the money. And he says, what do you want? And I say, daddy, that chocolate. I say, daddy, that bicycle. I say, daddy, that, that's in my mind. The way some people pray, see their God in prayer. You know how to see their God? Their God is a soldier. And it's, it doesn't enter candy shop. It's driving past candy shop. I say, daddy, please stop. No, not that it is just, just stop. I'm hungry. Start. Can we go there? That's it. And the more you see yourself that way in prayer, that's the result you have. I see that God, that, listen to what the apostle said. Apostle says, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far beyond what we can ask or think. Does that look like the God that is holding back from you? Look at the certainty. Have you read John 14 and 16 before? Jesus Christ said, ask that your joy may be full. My God. He said, ask that your joy may be full. He says, even though you've asked nothing in my name. He said, ask that your joy will be full. See how Jesus spoke. So a single girl says, God, so this is how you keep on looking at me. Because in her mind, see, you are praying to him and, and you are angry with him. And you think it's your problem. And you expect answers from him. Let me give an assignment. Have a look up here. I want to give an assignment. And I want to text me back. I want to DM me. Send me this on social media. All your friends that don't have answer prayers. Listen to them. Most of them think God is their problem. Go and do a survey. If you see it's true, send me a message. Most of them think that there's something that God is not happy with. God is not responding. God is not just standing up for me. God is not just defending me. God is just allowing the devil. God is, I'm waiting for God's timing. They just really think God is a problem. And I'm saying this is the root of our prayers. And the first thing Jesus Christ said is not, I love you their name. He says, our father. He didn't say my father. He says, my own and your own. He says, our father. As I have legitimate access you have legitimate access. Our Father. Learn to pray like Jesus. When Jesus was in the boat and the storm was coming in, he didn't say, Yay, God, is it what you're going to do to me? Ah, and I'm serving you. And I'm looking at me. And the, and the storm is coming to the water. And how will I preach the gospel? He didn't say so. Because he was praying from a place of assurance. When there was not enough food to feed the multitude, he didn't say, Father, you called me. Ah, why are you doing this to me? What did he say? He said, Father, I thank you. When he got to Lazarus' tomb and everybody had abused him and put pressure on him, he didn't say, God, God, don't disgrace me. Don't disgrace me. What did he say? He said, Father, I thank you. He was always full of thanksgiving because he knew who his father was. We are not always doing that because we don't even trust he's our father. Listen to me. God loves you more than you love yourself. You know what John, John says in 1 John? He says, behold, what manner of love the Father has given to us. He says, it's, Paul says it this way. He says, the height, the depth, the breadth, the length, the width of God's love that your mind cannot comprehend it. Let me tell you something. God wants you to succeed more than you want to succeed. God wants you to prosper more than you want to prosper. God wants you to carry your baby more than you want to carry your baby. God wants you to get married more than you want to get married. How do I know that? The Bible says the plans I have towards you are what? Of what? Huh? Of good, not of evil. Then the second thing he says is this. He says my thoughts are what? Higher than your thoughts. You want to see that in the Bible? It says, my ways and my thoughts are what? This is what religion does. Religion says, if you want to buy an S-class for 70 million, if you pray for God's will, God will say, don't buy that. Go and buy a B2 for 200,000 naira. Because God always wants bad things for you. Yes or no? That's what religion says. But what does the Bible say? It says, my thoughts are higher. You know what higher is? Higher is above. If you are thinking of buying an S-class that is 70,000, 70 million. God is saying, why not try a Tesla? Praise God. 
you're, you're so, and listen, this is the reason why most people cannot believe God's will. Because, you know, a lot of people don't trust God's will. Because in their mind, God's will will be something that is substandard. Should I shock you? The Bible says, it's your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. You need to know what pleasure is. Pleasure means fun. Like, it's God has fun when you're blessed. He said, it's your father's... Oh, my God. Let's take this thing. Oh, Lord Jesus. Let's look at this thing. Oh. I have to close. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Luke 12, verse 32. So one of the major reasons why people don't see effectively is because they already, for example, let, let me give you a good example. If you go and meet a girl, you see you want to date her, and he says, I know you're not giving your number, but I wanted to try anyway. Will she give you a number or not? What? She will not, because you already came off what? Negative. The more you are negative about God, the more you don't get positive responses. That's what I'm going to. The same thing, if you go for an interview and they say, how do you know, you, how do you know you're the right person for the job? You say, well, I know I'm not the right person for the job. I just have to try. You will not get the job. Because you cannot be negative and get what? A positive outcome. You can't be negative about God's love for you, what God is to you, what God wants for you, and expect a positive outcome. Your negativity is going to cancel every, positivity, um, every positiveness. I'm saying so because this is where a lot of people struggle. A lot of people just struggle to believe that God loves them and God wants to answer their prayers. A lot of people just struggle with that. You know why I'm bold in prayer? Because I know God loves me and God loves his people. As a matter of fact, you know what it says? It says, come boldly to the throne of grace. It, 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 says, it says, come boldly. It says, don't come like a coward. It says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Question, have you been coming boldly or beggarly to the throne of grace? I said, this is a class for seniors because when they are babes, we have to teach them to receive command. But seniors, they just go, Father, in the name of Jesus. So bad, I had that they say it like this, the anointing fills the whole room. And this thing I've taught you, for a lot of you, it's difficult to absorb. You know why? For the first 40 years of your life, this is not what you have learned. But all this thing I've told you is in the Bible. Go and search it. Luke 12, verse 32. See what the Bible says. It says, fear not. Why? So what kills fear? It's a knowledge. It says, fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. See, every time I'm going through a tough time, I remind myself, it's my father's good pleasure. Like, it's not even my prayer. It's the fact that God is in a hurry to bless me. Did you see what, 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 what did you notice what this person said? Psalm 23. David says, thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Is the running over God. God always does overflow. To let you know, I'm, I'm not mising it at all. I have it in abundance. I'm not, I'm not rationing. I have it in abundance. You want a great husband? He has in abundance. You want a great job? He has in abundance. You want properties? He has in abundance. He said, he said the cattle upon a thousand, it will belong to me. Praise God. The cattle upon a thousand, it belongs to me. Our God is El Shaddai. El Shaddai means the God that is more than enough. Means the God that sees and provides. Praise God. My God is not short-handed. My God is not into shortage. My God can do more than enough. What am I saying to you when you pray? Pray from a place of the fact that he is my father. He wants to bless me. That's what he has done in Christ. I've come to receive. This one, it now makes sense to you what it says in James. Let's read James. Maybe I, I can go farther than this, but you know, James James chapter 4. We read it before. You now understand what it says in verse 3 when it says, Your acts and what? God says, Your acts, I gave it to you. But you couldn't receive it because He never says no. It says, Your acts, 
You are the one that did not receive. Don't say I didn't give it to you. Is that not shocking? Is it you asked? You didn't receive. I, no, I, I gave it to you. So let's look at James chapter 1. Let, let's, look, let's look at why some people don't receive. Just James chapter 1 also. Verse 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of the Father. That what? James chapter 1 verse 5. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Father that what? That gives. Did, see the description. It gives to all men liberally, generously. He doesn't mise it. And up, upgraded not. Upgraded not mean it doesn't withhold back. And it shall be given him. Look at verse 6. Let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with winds and tossed. For let not that man think that he what? Receive. Did he say, is, oh my God. Oh my God. I, I want to blow out of my chair. I'm telling you, I want to blow out of my chair. Because religion says that if you don't have faith, God will not give you something. Nonsense. If you don't have faith, you cannot receive what has given you. Religion says, you didn't get the miracle, you didn't have faith. Nonsense. God did not give it to you because you didn't have faith. Nonsense. Because they missed it somewhere. They say, you didn't receive it because God, God did not give it to you because you didn't have faith. That's not what the Bible says. It says this, if he does not have faith, he's wavering. Let not that man think he will receive, not that God will give. It means that either you have faith or not. God has given. Your faith helps you to receive what God has what? Given. Your faith helps you what? Receive what God has given. Hallelujah. 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 This is good. Your faith helps you receive what God has given. You want a baby? Your faith helps you. Don't say, God, give me a child. Your faith helps you receive what God has given. That's what your faith does. You want a hundred millionaire? Your faith helps you receive what God has given. So, most of you, your attention has been, I'm compelling God to ask me. So, why do we fast? That's why we fast. Why? We're trying to tune our spirits so that our receiving capacity can be at a higher frequency. That's why Thursday, Friday, and next week's prayer, the most important in this fast. Because we're coming to a conclusion. I said tomorrow when we start praying, next level. Before the next level prayer, you will stay by yourself 15 minutes. Bring out your prayer request. Pray of inquiry as you are praying. You'll be receiving. You'll be receiving. What do I need to know? What do I need to hear? What do I need to see? How do I need to receive? You'll begin receiving. So that by the time we now come together at 6 30, Allah to Kabaya. Ah, explosions are different kind of miracles, signs, and wonders by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and pray.